All right, Miss Kumid Easy, this video is going to discuss ankle brachial index, uh, how to calculate it and why it's important. Um, the key phrase here is going to be higher of the two. That's something you have to remember. That's where everyone gets tripped up, okay? Just remember that as we go through this, higher of the two. So in any case, ankle brachial index is an index or a ratio of ankle to brachial uh, blood pressure. And it's a sign of peripheral uh, vascular, specifically arterial inflow disease. Um, PAD or peripheral arterial disease is a huge, huge deal. Um, 10 to 15 percent of Americans suffer from it. Can lead to all sorts of symptoms and uh, manifestations. Um, also, if you have, you know, peripheral arterial disease, more likely you have central arterial disease or problems with your heart uh, and uh, coronary art artery disease as well. So, um, also clinically significant there. Um, in any case, the way you calculate this is you first get your um, ankle pressures. This is usually achieved using a uh, 5 to 10 megahertz Doppler probe, uh, which is like a little um, thing that checks uh, changes in flow. Um, a lot of people are familiar with this, especially lay people, as the thing that checks for fetal heart tones. So when uh, you know the new mom goes to the uh, OB clinic and they check for fetal heart tones, um, this is what the technology they're using. Um, in any case, you look for the uh, pedal uh, Doppler sounds, um, or Doppler signals rather, and that would be your dorsalis pedis or your DP, kind of found over the arch of your foot, um, lateral to uh, the kind of the big tendon of your, uh, of your first toe, and then your posterior tibial artery, which is behind your medial malleolus. Um, excuse me, I guess this, should, this would be on the other side of the foot. This is lateral and this would be medial, so it would actually be around the back here behind the, the uh, uh, medial malleolus. Sorry, I drew that poorly. In any case, um, you know, the book says have the patient lie supine and, and not um, take any vasoactive medications and be relaxed for at least 10 minutes. I don't know how often that actually happens, but in any case, you place a blood pressure cuff, just like you use to check a, you know, brachial normal uh, blood pressure proximal to the patient's leg, somewhere on their calf maybe would be a good example. And then um, you place your Doppler uh, probe here to look, listen for Doppler signals on, either, on both actually of those places. You inflate the blood pressure cuff, um, you know, and then just to take a normal manual blood pressure, you release the blood pressure cuff and it'll give you um, the pressure at which blood flows through those two arteries and when, the, when the sounds reoccur. So let's say that, you know, your PT was um, 100 and your DP or your dorsalis pedis was 110. So that phrase I told you at the beginning, the higher of the two, <clears throat> to check the ABI of this leg, let's say this is the patient's because of the orientation of the right leg, um, you're gonna use the higher of the two, so the better of the two. So you kind of give the leg the benefit of the doubt. That way you know they have at least uh, single arterial inflow disease to so use the best one, or in inflow supply, I should say. So we're gonna use 110 for our ankle pressure, which is actually our DP. And then we're gonna calculate a brachial pressure um, same way you normally do, but again, you do the higher of the two. So you don't have two arteries that we check in the arm, that refers to both arms. So you're gonna check both the right arm and the left arm, and you're, you're gonna use the higher of the two. Um, the best place, the easiest place to find uh, the brachial uh, Doppler signal is just proximal to the elbow on the, in, uh, on the interior of the arm, uh, on the uh, medial side, I should say, kind of just uh, posterior to the uh, biceps, brachii tendon there in a groove, and you kind of feel down against the humerus, um, and you'll feel uh, the pulsation. That's where you want to put your Doppler probe, listen for Doppler signal, same deal. Inflate the blood pressure cuff until the sound goes away, and then slowly release it and note the pressure. So let's say that we do that, <clears throat> and the brachial pressure is, uh, excuse me, I'll use black, it's um, 100 on one side, and the contralateral side, it was 110. So remember our phrase, we're gonna use the higher of the two arms, which is 110. And so if we put that down, um, when you calculate, calculate this out, you take 110 divided by 110, and that equals a perfect uh, 1.0. In theory, that should be the normal, right? Because your systemic blood pressure should be the same throughout your body. It's maintained in this closed system. Um, but because of disease and because of all sorts of fluctuations, um, the actual normal range that people usually report is uh, 0 0.9 to 1.3. Anything in here, an index calculated anywhere in here is actually normal. Um, 
a lot of times with calcified vessels, like as seen in those people with uh, renal disease or uh, diabetics or just elderly people, you know, calcifications increase. Um, and so that leads to these hard calcified vessels that don't compress that well, and that'll artificially inflate your ABI. Unfortunately, your ABI is super specific and super sensitive. It's a really good, cheap, non-invasive test that just about anybody can do and most people should be able to do, um, with the exception of these patient populations. So when you're diabetics, your uh, kidney patients, and your you know elder, elderly patients in general, your ABI is not going to be as uh, useful. Uh, in fact, you'll see ABIs that are higher than 1.3 in someone who clearly has peripheral arterial disease, so you know that it's not accurate. You have to move on to your other uh, modalities of testing them. Um, the other clinical significance of these numbers, right? So if you get a number that's between, it depends on who you ask, but usually between 0 0.5 and 0 0.9, this would be, uh, you know, the, the first stages of peripheral arterial disease, and that's um, classically manifest as claudication. Claudication is a fancy way of saying um, reproducible um, pain in a large muscle group in the leg uh, that is reproducible, meaning every time there's some sort of exacerbating or provoking activity, it causes those symptoms to occur. So the classic way to describe this would be, you know, hey doc, every time I walk 50 feet, my right buttock starts to cramp and it's that cramping pain um like when you go to the gym and you max out your you know your wall sit or whatever eventually your legs and your abs start to really burn it's that same thing those those muscle groups aren't getting enough oxygen so they're starting to burn their legs aren't getting enough oxygen it's just a you know very different amount of activity um so that's claudication it can also sometimes be described as a heaviness or a uh, achiness and um, but you really have to tease out their symptoms and make sure that what it is is this reproducible, same muscle group, same location um, type symptom that happens always at the same time. That's classic claudication. You know, lower than that, it's like 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 ABI. You're starting to get into that ischemic rest pain type zone. What that means is, um, you know, with elevation, lack of dependency, of that limb, they start to have this cramping pain, the same deal where they're having ischemia, uh, and so it starts to hurt. The classic example is when I'm in bed, my leg is elevated, and so it really starts to cramp, usually over like the dorsum of the first toe, kind of like the arch of the foot, and then for some reason when I stand up and walk around, or if I hang my leg over the side of the bed, uh, the pain goes away. What you know, What's causing that, Doc? And the reason why is because with that dependency, the gravity you know, helps uh, pull flow down to the leg, I guess. Um, in any case, that's classic ischemic rest pain. Um, below an ABI less than 0 0.4, less than or equal to really is pretty bad. Um, that's, you know, indicative of end-stage peripheral disease, arterial disease, like um, non-healing wounds, ulcerations, gangrene, you know, dead feet, um, Things like that. that. That's real. That's pretty bad. Um, and that, that um, like, like all these symptoms, um, may warrant some intervention to try and increase that ABI. This is a good way to follow chronic peripheral arterial disease patients because every time they come to your clinic or every time they're seen by a doctor, you can trend their ABIs over time. You can also look for segmental changes and, um, and different, different changes and, and things like that using ABIs and uh, uh, indices and ratios. We'll talk about in other videos. Um, but so to review, ankle brachial index, the name itself, ABI, tells you what your equation should be. It's your ankle pressure, the higher of the two, divided by your brachial pressure, the higher of the two, and that gives you a ratio um, that hopefully should be in this normal range, 0 0.9 to 1.3. And then if it's lower than that, you know, you got to start asking in, about their symptomatology and start thinking about other tests to find um, areas of disease. That is an ABI. Thanks.